Hi everybody, Dave from Mathagon here. I'm going to share with you an idea that I have about how to use the probability tools in Polypad to help students visualize situations in which we would multiply probabilities of events together when they're happening one after each other. My students seem to struggle initially with the idea of when to add versus when to multiply probabilities of events, and I think this activity could help them have a picture in their head of when to multiply probabilities. So the question I have to think about is what's the probability of rolling a seven and then a nine on two dice? And so just to get students some initial ideas about this, I would have them go to Polypad and put a pair of dice on the screen and try to roll them and try to get a seven and a nine. Not try to roll them, actually roll them and let's see if they can get a seven and a nine. So I'll do it a few times, let's see. I'm trying to get a seven and a nine. I got a nine, but I want the seven first. So I got a nine and an eight. Let's see, and then we got five and seven. We're trying to get a seven and a nine. So maybe have students do it like 10 times each and then put the results on the board and you could get a total experimental probability of what happened. But then I want to actually model this in Polypad. So I'm going to create 54 sets of two dice. And what I really like here is how quickly I can make 54 sets of two dice. So there's a set of six. I'm going to copy and use the arrows on my keypad. There's three sets of six. So look how quickly I was able to make 54 sets of two dice. So I'm going to roll all these just to see. And the question that we're thinking about is what's the probability of rolling these and getting a seven and a nine? So what, what we have here, and I would have students do this on a canvas as well, so they could um, follow along on their own canvas. We have 54 pairs of two dice. And what we're trying to do first is roll these and trying to get a seven. So at this point, students would have done a lot of work of thinking about the probability of rolling a certain number on two dice. And so here we're trying to get the probability of rolling a seven. So hopefully without too much time in class, they could, uh, the students and you could discuss that there are six out of 36 ways, which comes out to one sixth. And so we know that 54 times a sixth is nine. That we would expect nine of these 54 dice to come up as a seven. And so then, because I have six columns of nine here, we could just copy these and move them over. We got an extra one by mistake, so I'll get rid of that in a second. All right, we can get rid of that one. So there's the nine that we would expect to be a seven. And then what we're going to do next is roll all those, and we're trying to get a nine. So now we would discuss that our next probability event is trying to roll these and get a nine. And you could talk about how there's four out of 36 ways or one ninth. Uh, the probability of rolling a, a nine is one ninth. And there's nine of them here because I conveniently picked 54 dice to start with. But we would expect one of these to become a nine. All right, so we could add that to the bottom as well. All right, I'm gonna go back to the pen tool and say that now this is getting multiplied by a ninth, and so we'd expect one, right? So I think this is a good visual of that. But what I really like now is you can do it. And students can do this on their own canvas. So I'm gonna get rid of these and get rid of those, and we're gonna see what actually happens. So I'm gonna highlight and roll all of these. And I'm gonna go through and select all the ones that are sevens. So here we go, I'm gonna hold down the shift key. So there's a seven. And where's the next seven? Eight. Here's a seven. 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 And students could be doing this on theirs as well. So each, everyone in class is going through and finding all the sevens they got. I don't think I got as many as we expected. So now, oh, I'm gonna copy these first, copy, and I'm gonna move them all over. And those are all the sevens that I got. Hopefully students would, uh, you know, students will get a different amount of sevens, but I'm gonna put all my sevens in a column here, right? 
And again, students would be doing the same thing on their polypad, right? So I got six sevens, right? So my actual here was six instead of nine. I could label that on the screen, maybe in a different color. Students would be doing this on theirs as well, right? So we got six instead of nine, and that's okay, right? Some students might get exactly nine, some might get more, some might get less. And then you can roll all these and see how many of those become a nine. Oh, and I got one. Five and four is nine, there we go. So even though I only had six, I still got one, right? Great. And again, you could put on the board how many did all your students get? Some I'm sure didn't get any. Hopefully some got one, maybe some got more than one, and you could list all those on the board and see the total results as a class, right? But I really like this visual of starting with 54 and then saying we'd expect nine and then seeing what you get, and then saying from those nine, we'd expect one and then seeing what you get. And then you could have students on their own go try this with a different number. Maybe they could make a polypad with 108 dice, right? Wouldn't be very hard just to copy all of these. So they could do it with 108 if you feel like they can handle not having whole numbers of dice and thinking about what that might be, maybe do 100 dice, right? And then eventually you can get to the idea that, well, if we just started with one, right, the same thing is going to happen. That's going to be a seven about a sixth of the time. And then that next event, we're trying to roll a nine, which is a ninth of the time. And that's a 54th, right? And certainly you'd practice a lot of these, but I, I think the visual of starting with 54 dice and then getting it smaller and smaller as you go through the event help build that understanding of when to multiply probabilities. So hope this gave you some good ideas about how you can use it in class. Please share other ideas that you have so we can all uh, learn from each other ways to use these great tools. Thanks for watching.